Hey guys, so uh, instead of watching Mr. Johnson and I sit on a couch talk about courtesy, uh, our footage got corrupted. So today you guys get to uh, look at some awesome drone footage of Silver Lake uh, while you listen to Mr. Johnson and I discuss our opinions on courtesy. This one gets pretty deep, so be prepared. Um, but leave a like, comment, um, and yeah, thank you guys for uh, listening. Welcome back to the podcast. Last week we talked about um, modesty. modesty. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you had a lot of really good points on modesty. Um, today we're going to talk about the next black belt principle in the sequence, which is courtesy. Um, do you have any uh, regular thoughts on courtesy? Just how do you think people nowadays are approaching courtesy as opposed to um, how you think we should be approaching courtesy? Well, I think. Um... I think nowadays most individuals are not necessarily um, meaning to be discourteous. I think there's just a lack of of courtesy in general being given, and I I would argue that it's probably directly related to how much time um, individuals have and how compressed they are and how there's not a lot of opportunity for self reflection, and the byproduct of that has been they're just more quick and direct do you think that uh because of social media getting things like instantly instant gratification you know kind of talking texting um likes comments stuff like that kind of affect you um having that time that you said for self-reflection um yes and uh we don't have a habit of any time you know day of doing a self-reflection um usually it's it's all we are consumers of of information and media throughout our day um and then at work it's the same thing and then at home it's entertainment and then you know it's we're constantly on all the time constantly on so what happens is there's no opportunity for us to be able to to process that feedback and i think um the concepts we just become too emotionally repressed and don't have an opportunity to exercise our uh, um, our concern for uh, how we treat others because courtesy is kind of the outward um, perspective like how you approach the people around you how you interact with the people around you and how you uh, display yourself um do you think that uh people now versus people like 30 40 years ago are dealing with different problems in regards to this um no i think there's always been the opportunity to uh to be discourteous we can go throughout history and always find you know storylines that are where people have actively not done that. So I don't think it's just a social media aspect. I think what happens is um, because we've had so much opportunity to be so well connected to everyone, the argument and the observation of seeing how being discourteous or courteous or not being courteous or being naive and just being vague um, provides us the opportunity to actually um, have this discussion and say, well, what does it mean? What does it mean to be courteous? Why is that important? Um, and be able to go back and find concrete evidence of how problems could have been avoided had one been more self-reflective and more courteous. What are some of those problems you think people run into, like um, in regards to being courteous? So I feel like nowadays people are pretty selfish, not in necessarily a bad way, but everyone's kind of in their own world. They'll do things. They'll do things for themselves rather than incorporating how other people feel. I, I would I would argue that is probably a real um, astute observation that um, the human condition has been very much into themselves, and uh, you know that's not necessarily bad i would argue that what's what's the outcome for us as a society 
um, is that in our best interests to be only for ourselves? Does that help um, the next three generations? I do think, though, when you talk about, like, self-reflection and, you know, being introspective, it's, it's just another type of selfishness. You know, if, if I sit back and I uh, look at myself, it's time I'm not helping somebody else. I might be making myself a better person, that I can be a nicer person, I can understand myself, and I'll be happier, and I can make other people happier, but don't you think that it's possible that the, like, perspective, because I have, I have a perspective that there are, are different levels of selfishness, I think that in order to be there for somebody else, you have to figure out your own issues first. You know, like you have to, you know, if you're depressed and you can't get up in the morning, you shouldn't be the person people are calling for help. You know, like if, if you're not getting out of bed and get showing up to places on time and being prepared with your uniform for class or asking thoughtful, provoking questions and anything like that, I don't think that you would be in a place that you can help other people. So I think there's a certain level of selfishness that's required in order to move forward, if that makes sense. Well, I can understand your position, but I would argue sometimes perhaps the inverse is correct. If an individual is not being able to um, find their own personal self-worth, usually um, those are the individuals who need to be approached and said, can you help? Because if they're not able to find their own self-worth, get themselves up, sometimes you have to, you know, borrow the light from someone else before you can find it in yourself. So... But that, that would be asking for help. I, I think sometimes being courteous is to give the other people the opportunity to see their own value in your life when you ask them for help. Yeah. But what I'm saying is you you wouldn't be the person that would be asked of if you can't sit back for a minute and figure out, you know, like uh, an example would be if, uh, if I'm depressed, I'm having a hard time, I can't wake up in the morning. I mean, like depression and sadness and, and anger and all those kind of emotions I think are very different. And I think depression is where you can't do anything. You wake up, you just want to be in bed, you just want to sleep, you don't want to go to work, you don't want to do anything, you don't have any hobbies, you don't want to talk to people. You may scroll through social media, watch a bunch of memes and then go back to bed or watch a TV show or whatever, like can't get up, depressed. You know, not had a bad experience or, you know, lost a family member or your dog died. That's sadness, but depression, if if you're in a state where you can't keep track of yourself and you can't wake up in the morning, go work out, uh, go to work, get stuff done at work, do you think that uh, you should be a person people come to? Or do you think that that level of selfishness that says, I have to work on myself first? Say like, if I'm super depressed and someone calls me and says, Gabe, I need your help. You know, I need you to t talk to me about this. this. My girlfriend broke up with me. Uh, my boyfriend hit me or you know something like that and you have to deal with those emotional problems do you think it's courteous to other people when you can't handle your own problems to try to take on somebody else's well if somebody's if we feel that somebody's actually depressed and and in that position um my advice is, would be always to try to get somebody more professional help than than just a friend I think a friend would be someone who would be courteous enough to say, these are individuals that I think you should be talking to. Um, I, I don't know that you're, you're understanding. I'm depressed. Okay. You ask me for help. Yes. Should I, as a person who's in a terrible place, try to help you? I think you would find yourself valued. Because I would, I would present that your depression is probably related to the fact that you're not seeing any value in your own life. And sometimes being able to help others is an opportunity to see that you actually have an impact. Do you think you can help others? I think sometimes, yes. I think, I think in the, some of the most valuable things can be even 
um, the most benign little efforts. You know, so, for well, for example, um, you know, parking. You know, somebody you know is is coming out. You, you can be courteous by making sure that they got enough time to pull their car out, mm-hmm. paying attention. There's no need to honk and says, you know, hey, I'm here first, and you know that's. This, you know, you can honk and say, oh, just let you know I was here. But what happens is, you know, every driver okay, can tell the magic of the honk. And say, you know, hey, I'm just letting you know I'm here. This is, you know, get out of my way. You're, you're being a, a foolish driver by being just courteous and not knowing that I have the right of way. Mm-hmm. And there's no communication. It's just a matter of timing of the horn. And Well, I, I would argue that... Uh... Being courteous is um, taking responsibility for your own actions. You know, uh, when a student shows up late, I don't think it's fair of us as instructors to say uh, it's the parent's fault and the kid gets to get away with it because the responsibility to be there on time does not lie with someone else. The responsibility of having your uniform doesn't lie with somebody else. The responsibility of having your weapon or your belt or uh, the knowledge, I guess you could even argue, doesn't lie with somebody else. And so for you to demonstrate courtesy, you would need to, you know, be there, bells and whistles on everything ready. And um, I think people equate, when you talk about like, respect nowadays i think most people are saying respect is courtesy like if they were to bring definitions into it you know showing up on time for work is respectful showing uh you know that your boss is ahead of you and and listening to them properly and making sure that you have your laptop when you show up for work or making sure that you have a b or c d done by this time would all be courtesy um but I think a lot of people think of courtesy and respect as the same thing. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can understand that. Um, I believe that you know, one of the things that we're attempting to teach in, um, is, is that courtesy is an, is an internal characteristic rather than, and, and, and thereby the, what we see on the outside um, are the, the things such as being on time, having your laptop, you know, listening to your boss, your instructor, your teacher, your parents. Um, so, so what we're trying to do is identify the fact that there's a characteristic of a courtesy right now, practicing those external aspects. But really, I feel that the depth of the martial artist is to be able to take it internal and say, how do you respect yourself? And I think that's where you start talking about the selfishness. It's like, you know... You have to be courteous and kind to yourself as well. I'm saying, yeah. I, I'm arguing that I think people should be uh, more uh, selfish in the sense that, in, in my opinion, if you are in the deepest, darkest place and you can't, and you, and you keep doing stuff to try to get out of it, um, and you keep failing, any advice or help or assistance you think you'd give to somebody else, as much as they may want it, would be mute. Well, the repercussions of that would be what? That that individual stays there. So, um, before you try to solve other people's problems, solve your own. Yes, and I would argue that courtesy would be the opportunity to be able to facilitate other people. Kind of, kind of like what you said with modesty, in the yeah. sense that like modesty is supposed to be internal. But I think behavior is an external action. I don't think, I think being courteous is completely external. I don't think there's any internal courtesy unless you're talking about um, your ability to do something properly, which then therefore I think you do have to go inside. You have to look at yourself, make sure you're okay and do what you need to do. But if um, we're depressed and we can't help ourselves, that's when we ask for help. I think a lot of people nowadays are in a spot where uh, they're they're pushing the fact that they're depressed, but then also talking to their friends about, you know, well, let's go talk about it, and you can tell me your problems, I'll tell you my problems. I don't think that's depression. I think that's fake. I think a lot of people 
especially like kids and teenagers like even when I was going through high school and college you know depression became almost a joke depression became something widely spread and talked about and you know people will make TikTok videos and uh, Instagram videos about them being depressed and like the reality situation is if you're making those videos you're not depressed you don't know what that means if that's what you're doing because the people who are depressed aren't saying, well, let me make a TikTok about how I'm feeling because they don't have the energy to get up and make the, that TikTok. Like I've had friends who have been completely silent that cut off everything in their life because one bad thing happened to them. They're not asking people for help. I think when you're sad or you're angry or you're frustrated, you ask somebody for help. When you're depressed, you get stuck. And I think it's courteous for other people to go out and look for you know individuals they can help you know and say like hey look you know i haven't heard from dylan in two three months or whatever you know he he might be mad at me for something i don't care i'm gonna check on him see how he's doing see if he wants to hang out when he tells me no try to convince him to i think that's where the external uh kindness gets shown but i think a lot of times people like to assert their own viewpoint onto others and it and it makes it makes a cordial conversation turn into an argument do you feel dylan felt devalued or that he didn't have purpose um i mean it's possible i i mean he ended up taking his own life so i'm sure he was not um a hundred percent um but it's it's one of those things where there's a bigger picture of courtesy, and I think it's how people externally um, show their kindness. I think modesty, I think you were right on the money last time when you said we need to look inside of ourselves and see you know, what I need to work on. But I, I, I feel courtesy, as, as the way we define it, at least at Echo, is all external. It's how regardless of how you feel about yourself and how you feel about others, you're going to always make sure that you're being respectful, responsible, and uh, attentive. Do you recall the definition of courtesy? Beyond time and prepare, display generosity and consideration by respecting others and their property, show civil behavior, good sportsmanship and polished manners, allow others to be right, be receptive to input from others, have tolerance of others' differences. Sounds very good. Which one? Which statement do you have the biggest challenge with uh, allowing others to be right <laughs> um, I think there are times where both people can be right and I think uh, for me I get stuck in that idea that uh, you are both right and I'd like my right to be the most right <laughs> so I don't I don't go around looking at people saying you're wrong but I definitely go around looking at people going, ha ha, I'm right. Well, I, I look at uh, that sort of like a, a Google Maps option. You know, when I place a destination, it'll, Google Maps, bless its heart, will give me three different directions to get to the place I'm going. And for me, all of them are right. However, there may be circumstances that Google Maps is not aware of that um, I need to make a determination of which pathway to get to. And I think we'll talk about that in, when we um, discuss integrity, that, um, that you know, there's different pathways of right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as far as courtesy is concerned, I think sometimes it can be discourteous to um, actively try to redirect someone's position. Yeah. Do you think, like, in class, it's very common for us to be interrupted by a student with their idea of the subject? Um, do you think that the at, at what point uh, does it become discourteous and at, at what point is it um, at what parts of that interruption could still be considered courteous and what parts of those interruptions could be um, considered discourteous well I think the, the, the efforts at, at being courteous is when we have a young student um, raising their hand or interrupting, sharing um, information that they have already received. For example, you know, uh, you know, we, we ask, you know, what are the components of a good stance? And somebody says, you yeah, keep your hands up. 
Well, that might not necessarily have been the direction of a lesson, but it's not totally incorrect. And what I would present is that they are attempting to make a contribution. They're young enough to have that not been stifled by the, the community and the social interactions that we've had. Um, so I, I wouldn't look at that as they're being discourteous by interrupting or saying, you know, you know, you've got your, you know, your hands up, you've got your chin up, you've got your knees bent, you know, you, you've got your head forward, you know, whatever characteristic that they want to be able to identify that makes a contribution, I wouldn't look at that as being discourteous. It may be irritating for us as a teacher, but then of course, that's the opportunity for us to practice our own patience. Because courteous and I think being courteous and being patient kind of go hand in hand too. Because I, I, I do really think courtesy is all about how you interact with others. You know, because like we all get angry at stuff people say. We get frustrated when a student does something that they shouldn't or say something they shouldn't, contradict something we directly said. But do you think... Um, yeah, that's a characteristic of our, our humanity. And, and, and we'll get frustrated at that till the day we die because, you know, nobody likes to get interrupted. And I don't think that you could just be like, well, I got interrupted. It's like you're teaching something. It's not just like a conversation. It's not the same level of interruption. And I think that there's a conscious effort to interrupt, and then there's an unconscious effort to interrupt. You know, mm -hmm. hey, I have something to add to this, like what you were saying. But then there's also the, mm, I want to be right in this scenario. You didn't tell me that before. And I think while it's still discourteous, I think as instructors and hopefully future instructors, the idea would be, to uh, focus on how we can shift their perspective on being courteous while also maintaining our own version of courtesy. Yeah, well, patience, patience is the underlying characteristic that allows all of our principles to be applied. So, um, and, you know, in all of our students' defense and our defense, um, you know, people are quick. So it's a much faster world that we live in. Instant gratification is definitely something that we have to deal with. <laughs> People want to get their black belt now. They don't want to. They don't want to spend ten years training multiple things and learning all the lessons. And it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. And uh, it's not so much the instant gratification. I, I think I talked about this last podcast. Was that it's? I don't find that it's just instant gratification. It's changed to have instant emotional gratification so w w what's transition is from I want that now is I want to feel this mm -hmm. now and uh, that that's the transition I've seen in the in the in the 30 years of teaching that I've, that I've been involved with um, you know it first is you know I want a black belt but now it's you know I want the, the feeling I want the recognition of being a black belt and it's mm -hmm. like you know Okay, once you get a black belt, every other school and every other instructor, they, you know, you're, it's like welcome to the club, you know, let's go swim with a bunch of sharks. Many of them are bigger than you and, you know, you're not going to find very many small sharks where you're going to go swim and now you're a black belt. Right. And it's, it's a tough world. Yeah. So, courtesy, outward demonstration of modesty, um have to remember to be patient with people around us offer help when we can mm -hmm. and if you yeah if you can and you talked about um you know seeing somebody with depression i i still would say that if that's a point you um as much as we care we would want to get somebody as as professional as we possibly could to intervene that would have more information you know we like to think of ourselves as professional martial artists mm -hmm. and if what that does that means we know what questions should be asked mm -hmm. when we see a technique or we see an idea we we know what questions to ask. as a black belt you, we would learn what flaws we have in our training and um, when we see somebody that's depressed um, uh, the courteous aspect would be to um, get somebody professional in there somebody that, who knows how to help that would know what questions to ask that we wouldn't have thought of any other thoughts on courtesy that was pretty deep conversation that was deep yes um, ju just that um, everyone's struggling I wish it was easier for everyone it's it's tough I see youth today and especially um, you know 
like the young teens and you know I know it was hard for me growing up as a teenager you know and I know that you had challenges as well and some of the issues that are going on now um, are, are really difficult I'm sympathetic to be able to say you know well I attempted to do all the things that I needed to do so that I could be courteous to my mom that she didn't have to go find my belt I can be courteous that um, when it's time to come, you know, pick me up, that I am ready. I've got my my weapons and I've got my fight gear in my bag and I'm, I'm ready to, you know, so that um, I can show my mom that I care and I'm not holding out and just goofing off and playing. So, th so those are some of the things that I feel we can share with our students. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing really comes down is, you know, when somebody's interrupting us as a teacher, um, as a black belt, the lesson really, you know, uh, when the student's ready, the master appears. And um, sometimes those kids are here to teach us a lesson. Mm -hmm. And as a black belt, I feel the most important belt one can wear is their white belt. I like that. I think that's a pretty good place to call it. Um, thank you guys for watching. I know I got pretty deep, so... Uh, you guys have anything else that you'd like to add leave them in the comments maybe we'll talk about those pretty soon um if you want to be a guest uh let us know we'd love to have you student parent teacher other martial artist whatever um that'd be fun that'd be fun uh but yeah leave a like comment got a spot for you yeah um and we will see you guys next week